Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be bringing you another video on RESTful web services. What I want to do today is I want to show you an example with Azure and how we can actually create what's called an OCR service by using the Azure Cognitive Services to pull information from images. So we're gonna be doing OCR, which means optical character recognition, to pull text from images and then getting that information into Unity so that we can use it for the next video where we're gonna be mapping some of that data to actual objects. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we need to do to get everything configured. So right now I'm logged into the portal that azure.com and I'm going to be creating a new resource. So if you go to all resources and then marketplace and search for computer vision, then click on create, it's gonna give you these, basically this wizard. So we can say, we can probably give it a name and this is going to be for our Unity example. So I'm just gonna call it Unity Computer Vision. And then I can just use the free trial that I'm using right now. And then I can also determine Okay, how many calls do I want to do? So if I do it, if I do the F0, which is 20 calls per minute, they're gonna max out at 5,000 calls per month. Or I can also use to do the S1, which is 10 calls per second. And if you go into the pricing, so if you click here, it's going to open up here. And it basically is gonna give you a, walk, a break, breakdown of all the pricing that is available. So if you notice, I selected the Easy US. Let's say that I select West US, and we look at the pricing for West US, which I have selected here. I also selected, you know, the dollar amount is the currency that I want to see. And if you go down here, you can see what S1 contains. It's basically a web container. It has, it can kind of, it breaks it out here. So if you want to do, you know, if you're doing tagging or if you're doing face recognition or getting thumbnails, color, Let's say the one that I want to do, I want to do optical character recognition. So it looks like that's going to cost us from zero to one million trans. So from zero to one million transactions is going to be a dollar fifty per a thousand transactions. So I think I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use this. This is fine for for what we need. Or we could even use a free container. See how that goes, and then we can upgrade if we need to. Let's actually do that. Let's do a free one. And then if I need to upgrade, I can create a, I can create a second one. I can actually call this one the F0, since this is gonna be the one that we're gonna be using here. And then I need to tell it what resource group I'm going to be creating. So I am using a subscription, which is a free trial. So Azure gives you a free trial if you wanna, if you wanna do that, and it's $200 of credit. So that's, what, that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. So let's create a new resource. And I'm just gonna call it the Unity Unity, we can just call it Unity Resource Group. Hopefully this is not, doesn't need to be unique across the globe. Okay, so it looks like that worked. And then I'm just gonna click on Create. And yeah, this is probably gonna show, show the private keys and, and that's okay. I don't think there is a problem for me, for me showing you that because we're gonna be using it in the project anyways. But just know that there's a limit. So if other people are using it, it's going to be limited based on how many calls are, are happening. So while this is getting deployed, it's actually creating a web container. I'm going to jump back into Unity and I'm gonna show you the project that we that we try to that we tried to use, but we didn't have enough credits. So and this is gonna be the RESTful web service client that I created on a previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure that you do watch it. And I'm also going to be putting it in the description of this video. So you can see that I did it nine days ago. So let's go ahead and go into it. If you don't have it, make sure that you go to GitHub. I can show you where it is. Go to github.com, Delmar V, and then you can basically search for Unity, REST client. You can also go to Delmar V and it'll show you all my repositories. And you can see here that, you know, I have a few examples. In fact, I have an example of an image that I tried to recognize. And in fact, we're gonna be adding an image to this similar. But instead of having that in this other repository, I'm gonna store that image here. So we can use it for, you know, when you when you need to run the example, you can see it working as well. If you run out of credits, let's say that we hit the limit, 
make sure that you go into Azure.com and then basically set up a trial or a free subscription and then you can use it on your own with your own keys. All right, let's see where we are on this piece. So it looks like this, is, this has been completed and then I haven't done this on computer vision before. I mean, I've done it, but I haven't actually created one from scratch. So it looks like I have the keys here and I also have the endpoint. And I think we can, we'll figure it out. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And here is our scene that I just open up. And let me see what I have in here. So this is the one for Azure. And let me show you the code for those of you who haven't watched this video yet, because I want you to understand it well before you attempt to use it. And I'm just gonna open VS Code here. And then I'll show you how this piece works. It's like I got a new version of VS Code, so it's just showing me some of the some of the new features. So, and then this is not the one that I want to look at. I want to show you. I want to show you this one. Let me make sure that that's the one that is associated with this. We can. So, just before I go into the code, make sure that you look at this. And then, if you look at this scene, which is the REST client Azure demo, you're gonna see that there's a REST web client object in the hierarchy. There's also a REST client example here. So this basically has exposed properties. I showed you that before. It'll ask you what the base URL is, what the base client ID is, and also what the client secret is. So this is information that Azure is going to require anytime you're making a web, anytime you're making a web call. And let me undo that. So the way that it's going to work, if you go into the code and look at it, the Azure is going to require, like I say, the base URL. So this is the one that I have hard coded here but it's also exposed because it's a serializable field. I also have a client ID and also a client secret. And then this is the implementation that I created for our REST web client. If, like I said, if you haven't watched the video, make sure you watch the video because, because it's going to walk you through anything that is in the core. And I go into details of how we do it, how I created it, and I actually walk you through me creating that example, these REST clients so that you can actually make HTTP, HTTP calls over the web. Uh, using a, a REST, you know, a REST service type type of standard. So, so like I say, so you're going to need a, re, a client header, which is going to require a key and a value, which is going to be our client ID, also our client secret. The other piece that we're going to need to do, and we can leave this one as default. This is just going to be an image that I have, or we can add a new one. In fact, I think I'm going to add a new one so that we we know, so I can show you how we can download it, how, how we can put it in the project. And then the next thing is actually sending a post request to that URL, the URL that you see here that is doing the optical character recognition, which is OCR. So we're going to send a post request with the base URL. We're also going to be serializing this object to JSON. So what's going to happen is this is going to be basically a JSON in JSON format. We're going to send it over to Azure. Azure is going to say, OK, I need to pull that image. I'm going to try to extract the information from the image and then it's going to send it back to us. I mean, is that is that simple? There's a lot more going on on the Azure site, but those are things that we don't have to worry about because we're actually using a service. And then once we get a response back, we're going to get basically a callback. And, and this is something that I implemented. I have an action behind the scenes that is going to be passing to here as a delegate. And then once this is completed, it's going to call this method, which is, which is the callback. And like I said in the previous video, you can call this whatever you want. You just want to make sure that it, that it looks something like this. It's going to be more of a lambda, or you can do an action. But make sure that you also have the request object getting passing. Sorry, the re response object getting passing, which is this one right here. And then the last thing is just the headers that we are going to be including, which in this case is going to be the client ID and the client secret. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I have everything that I need for, you know, to actually make the make the call. And you can you can look in here, computer vision API reference. I'm gonna just click on that. And then it's going to pull the documentation. This is the exact same thing that I was looking at before. It's going to tell us, you know, what we need to pass. This is this object that I show you in the code that has the image URL and then a URL. So it's going to be basically this right here. And then they have just different settings like of things that you can do when you do a request. If you look at the details, you can tell it, you know, what, what some of the details could be. Are there celebrities? Are these landmarks? 
you know, is the language, a specific language, so that we can give the engine more information about what we're trying to do. So for the most part on this OCR, let me see if I can, I think this is just the vision. This is for anal analyzing an image. And let me see if I can find the, so this one is just gonna analyze an image. The one that I really, that I need is the OCR. And let me see if I can find the, if we go back into API documentation and we can go into vision we can also click on let me see if i can do ocr container support you can also do we can just do i think we can just do learn, learn more and then let's go ahead and go into api which is basically going to take us to the same place that i that i was on oh, okay so here it is so the the api reference for cognitive services gives you different options so these are different methods that we can we can do we can do an analysis of an image we can do you know, describing an image, batch read file, I don't know what that means, to be honest. We can detect objects, we can, so some of the things that we might use in Unity are some things like, you know, analyzing an image, detecting objects, getting, you know, information from an image, which is which is going to be OCR. So let's go ahead and try the OCR, click on it. And then I wanna show you some of the options. So look at this endpoint right here, that's gonna match the endpoint that we're passing in here. You can see that I have OCR, and I'm also passing query stream parameters. One is language and also the orientation. So that's basically gonna be this URL here. And then of course the image that we want to analyze. And then if everything works, we're gonna get some text back telling us what kind of information was read from the image. Okay, so I think everything here looks fine. Let me look at the C-sharp example, which is what we have. So I think what we need to pull in is going to be two parts of information. One is gonna be the key in one and the other one is gonna be the subscription key. So let me see how I can pull that because I, I honestly don't remember. So if you look at the key right here, we can we can pull the key. So every web API called computer vision and every Docker container activation requires a subscription key. Okay, so we know that because I have that here. I think that's really all you need. This is going to be the same for every request. And then the key, the secret key is going to be the one that we need to pass in. The other thing that I'm gonna need is, I, I believe I have to, I also have to pass in this URL because this is gonna be your web container. So let's try, let's try it like this and see what happens. So I believe we're gonna have to, let me try, let me try this and see what we get back. So resource now found, what if we do, what if we do, Okay, so that's giving us a 404. Let me see what we need to do in order to get, because this is gonna be the container. So if I go to overview, we will get, okay, so I see what we're getting here. The thing that I don't know what we need is the what the endpoints are gonna be in this, in by, by making a call here. Let me, let's try this. I think I, I might have an idea of what we need to do. I think this is gonna be the prefix that we need to specify. And let me go back, copy this, paste it here, okay. And then what I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need all of that, there we go. Vision, and then let's try it like this. If it, this doesn't work, we can find out what the problem is. But I just don't know if we're gonna need the part after it, or if we only need OCR after that. After that. It didn't really say anything about that when we were going through the the documentation okay that's okay we can we can figure it out so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to we can go ahead and just debug the code for now just to make sure that that's going to work so i'm going to go ahead and let's close everything else close others and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my little bug here and i'm going to make this a little smaller so that i can see everything gonna click here and then click on attach to the unity editor so now we should be attached you can see it because we're seeing threads and we, we're seeing the the call stack here and then what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna hit play and this should pro yep this should work so I got the client ID and also the secret which is the which that is the new key and then I'm gonna step over I'm gonna step over and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, yeah, I have a breakpoint on the on request complete. 
And well, I also have a breakpoint in the HTTP post. So we can see, okay, so it created a, it's making a call to that URL. It has that body, which is the image that we're gonna be analyzing. We're going to be adding headers because we need the client ID in secret. And then I'm setting the default content type, which is going to be JSON that is defined here. And let's step over, step over. We're gonna be sending the request and we're getting a call back. Hopefully this works. And I got some bytes back, so let's see if that's the data. And we had an invalid image format, looks like. Yep, it didn't like our image. But the cool thing is that it is working. Let's see, it just says invalid image format. Input data is not a valid image. That's fine, we'll, we'll figure it out here. And then what I'll do is I'll just, so the data that we're gonna get back is gonna be the error that we're getting, and we probably are gonna see it in here. So let's find out what image types they, they would take. I believe they take JPEGs because they're the most common images. And let's see image, see if there's anything saying supported image type, or let's see, so this is a language, orientation. So it's going to support JPEG, PNG, GIF. Let's go ahead and pull an image from the web and then we can we can use that for you know for for what we're doing in testing so let me go ahead and actually try it from my twitter and now that i'm trying to market my twitter but i'm trying to i'm trying to see if it's going to work let's see if we can pull my banner image here and if we can find out where that is and it's going to be this image right here and that's going to give us, yeah, that's going to give us that image. The The thing that I don't see is I don't see it having an extension. I don't know that it's gonna, that it's gonna matter, but we can see if it's smart enough to pick it up. So let's go back here and I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to just say that this is gonna be the image that we're gonna be analyzing. Let's see if it's smart enough to know that we, that that is a JPEG or what type of format it is. In fact, if we download this image, there might be other ways to look at it from Chrome, but this is the way that I know. If I go to and save it, okay, see, it is a JPEG. So Mac OS knows that it's a JPEG, so we should be good. So let's go back here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play again. And then we can go through the code one more time. I'm gonna just hit play because we already went through that. And then I'm just gonna step over and then we're still getting invalid image format, even though we are telling it, okay, invalid image format. Input data was not a valid image. Seems like I had the issues, this issue before. Just trying to remember what, what it was. I know once you get it right, it's going to work. Let's go ahead and actually pass in and tell it that we're trying to pull a specific image. So it's gonna find an image from the web. So let's go to Google, and then we can just we search for indie game developer. Indie game, we can just say indie games, I think that's fine. And then what I'll do here in search settings, see if I can, if I remember how to do this, we're gonna go to tools, and I can probably just do more. I know there's a way in here to tell it that I want a specific type. Or we can just say JPEG, I think that, I think that, that works. And then we can go into images, and then let's see if we can find something that has some text. So for instance, this one right here, it has text, and if I look at the link address of that, which is really, really long, let's see if I can find copy link address, copy image address, that's what I want. Okay, so that gives us that information. Let's go ahead and try that and see if that's going to work. I'm gonna go back here and then I'm gonna go back into my example, paste it in here. So I know that that is a JPEG. I mean, we're specifying that right here. I'm gonna attach it to Unity. Go back in here and hit play one more time. If not, we'll just Google it because I know that I had that same issue before. Okay, and this image should be correct now. Let's see, yep. 
and then if I go step over and then play it should take me to this point right here and I can step over and we're still getting invalid image format even though I'm telling it okay let's find out why why that is because I'm telling it this is let me look at let me look at the post one more time and see if I made any changes so I'm passing in the body and I'm passing in the body here in the URL the key and the value let me look at the implementation again the requirements of the cognitive services and we can we can figure it out so the request headers the media type of the body sent to the image okay see if they have an example here so I'm sending the content type the media type of the body sent to the image so in our case it's going to be uh, JPEG or well in our case it's gonna be JSON and that's that's basically what I'm saying what I'm giving it right here this is the default content type on the request so I don't think that's a problem and then I'm also giving it a key and then it's saying that it supports that I wonder how big that image oh and the dimensions need to be okay I don't think that image is that big but we can probably save it and then check it out so it's gonna save it we can just say indie games Let's just save it as that and then see how big that image is I'm sure that image is not that big yeah this is this is a tiny image so I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about that and then the size should be okay as well okay and I'm also telling it the language parameters the URL Envision 2.0 so this is our endpoint which we copy V the 2.0 let me make sure that I have that set as well which I do have set as well and yeah I think that let's go ahead and remove this language I'm gonna just try with bare bones and we can we can find out if that's the if that's the problem okay let me go ahead and remove it again because I was in play mode awesome and then that should be okay there I'm gonna go back into my debugger attach it go back here and hit play and we can go ahead and try one more time and we can look at this image let's go ahead and go into our watcher and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say image URL so we can see the entire object and then that should be our image which is one of the ones that they accept so I'm gonna hit play and then we're gonna hit play one more time so we can get in here and then we can look and see it says invalid image format all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have to google it because I don't see that we're doing anything wrong it must be less than 4 megs it must be a JPEG and let me also make sure that this image is accessible through let me just try so we can access it that way what if I try this image through HTTP let's try HTTP and see if that works if that doesn't work then we'll definitely find out why okay, I'm just gonna hit play one more time go back into unity hit play to stop it and then play to restart it can okay, you play here hit play one more time and then one more time it should take us to a response and then we can look and see what the response is invalid image well the whole point of using a service for Azure is so that things work <laughs> okay it's okay we'll, we'll figure it out let's see Azure OZR and computer input data is not valid which this is exactly what we're getting so we can find out if what we're sending is correct okay and input that is not a valid image okay so let's go back here and do and this was in 2017 let's try let's try this one 
image stream. You need to reset the stream before sending it. Interesting. They're using, yeah, they're using something else. Let me try Azure Cognitive Search. So this is called services. Cognitive services. Input data is not, a, yeah, that's exactly what we're getting. So we can go here. Okay, possible errors. Image URL badly format. And, okay. For the image URL, content type should be application JSON. For an image, okay, which is what we're doing. For a binary image data, content type should be application. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Let's see what re what other information we're getting there. So this is just a request ID. And then it seems like everything should just work. Data, input data is not in a, it's not a valid image. Okay. The the other thing that I'm gonna try, let's try this, because if you notice right here, I'm setting the content type on the upload handler, but I'm not setting a header. I wonder if that's the issue. So let me go ahead and set a new header for content type. So it's gonna say content type header. This might this might be the problem that I was facing before. Because this is actually the content that we're sending to and we're not telling what it is. Okay, so that actually this is going to be the value. And then this is going to be, let me make sure that I that have it exactly as they require. So it's going to be, it has to be capital C and capital T. And then like that. And then what I'll do is right here, I'll just do a comma. So this is a client. Probably should rename this to something like client security header. And then this is going to be content type header. Okay, so now we're passing into headers. Let me try that and see if that's going to work. And okay. And it's not that I don't have faith that it's not going to work. It's just that I know that to get this to work, once you get it working and, and it makes sense, it's easier. It's just going through that exercise that I haven't called this in a while, so I wasn't really sure. Okay, and we can look and see. Yep, that was the issue. So we need to we need to basically tell it that we're sending JSON data because if if no, it just doesn't know what you're sending it. So the cool thing about this though is look at that. So if I if I look at the value of data, let me go into see if I can find my let's go into the bug and then I should be able to pull, let's see, terminal, debug, I'm looking for my immediate window, and let's see, debug console, output, appearances, and debug console. Okay, so we can use the debug console, I think that's fine. And then if I do data, you can see that, you know, we're getting, we're getting all that data back. What I wanted to, what I wanted to show you is how we can pull that and I want to show it to you in JSON format. Okay, so I think that's fine. We'll just remove some of those values that are incorrect. Well, it's actually escaping everything. That's fine. We can just copy the value. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and open up a new tab. And then I have this thing called, well, for now, I'll just go ahead and let's see what I need to replace. I just replace anything that has that with, so if I search for that, I'm gonna replace it with just double quotes. And I only wanna do it in this file, and then that's almost valid JSON. Now that's valid JSON. And then what I'll do, I'll just bring in JSON pretty print. There we go, and now that looks a lot better. So, so this is the data with, that we got from that image. So if I go here and we look at in the games, I'm just gonna pull that image and and, go, and I don't have any association with this company. This is just the one that I that I found on the web. But I want to see if you read some of this information. So, which is why this is so powerful. So you can see that you know the, the bounding box is basically a location in this image and how wide 
it is, on, I think it's on pixel, so it'll tell us, okay, in this location, I found the word March, and then in this location, I found the word 2018, and you can see that it found also indie games, and this is the location for those two. So it found this bounding box here, it found this right here, and now also found you should know, which is that word, and then it actually found everything, and everything everything looks perfect. So so looks like that's working fine. Let's let's go ahead and have some fun with this, and see if we can use one of the images that I was using before. That I was. Let me go ahead and go back into my example here, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to Chrome, and let's see. Yep, this is the one that I wanted. So I'm going to copy the image address, and instead of having that be like that, I could add a new property. We can just say we can just say image to analyze or to OCR. That's actually better. And then we just set it to empty by default. And then we can just say something here like if a string is null or empty, we can just say image OCR we will return so we return and we also gonna say debug that log error we can say the image OCR image to OCR needs to be set through the inspector and then yep I think that should work otherwise I'll just set it in here and then we can just probably clean this up there we go. So this is just some validation checking. So I'm going to say validation. And then I can go back in here because I lost it because I copied something else. And then what I'll do this time, we don't need to debug it. In fact, all I need to do is look at the data that we're getting back. So I'm just going to hit play to stop it. And then here's our new attribute. I'm just going to paste the image URL. Let me make sure that that image URL is going to work. Okay, yeah, that's going to work. And then what I'll do, I'll clear my log here, and we're going to focus on this log. In a future video, I'm going to add the canvas, and we can look at a more friendly way of looking at the data. I can add a, a JSON object, and then we can deserialize it to it. But for now, I think looking at it in the logs is fine. So you can see that I was able to, so I should be able to see now available, and also the word cubics, cubics2. Let's see what we get here. And what I'll do for this one, we can probably just copy this actually looks better because it's right into the console and let's see if I can if I can grab it there we go then I'll go here into my own title paste it and then I'm using JSON pretty print that is an extension in VS code and that's why I can pretty print it so we can see a stickman it was captured cubix was captured now available and then for iOS, it looks like it captured that as but one word because it's just too close to each other. So there's just going to be some things that are not perfect. But I mean, for the most part, this is working really well. Even the letter I, it was able to recognize, even though it had this symbol here. And yeah, I mean, everything is working well and I'm, I'm pretty happy. And I apologize about the beginning. It's just, you know, one of those things that once I didn't travel shooting, it always helps you understand the process better and I think this gave us a lot of insight of what it was required so before I finish this video I want to I want to make sure that you know that I'm going to be checking it in so I'll check it in as soon as this video is posted and then you'll be able to look at this example and run it just know that the the client secret that you have here is going to have a limit and it's only going to allow us you know to make so many calls I think it was 20 calls per minute so if you if you get if we get to 20 calls or other people having call it then you should be fine but if we hit the limit we're not going to be able to call it so i will recommend that you you get your own client id just like i showed you in the beginning of the video so that you can you know you can play with it as much as you can so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.